In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this pretty daisy using gouache, so let's get started. I've done an outline here so you can trace it down if you want to, um, you can draw it freehand if you want to join in but I do provide you with a reference photograph and an outline to trace from and I'll tell you later on how you can have access to those. Just using a few colours today and some rather flimsy mixed media paper that came from this little book here. Um, I wasn't altogether happy with the quality of it but nevertheless I have some lovely paints so I'm just starting off by applying the white gouache along with a little bit of black. Now the trick here with gouache is to use as little water as possible. The idea being that you just had to add enough water to your gouache paint to make it spreadable. And you can see here I'm using a number four round watercolour brush and I have a tiny puddle of water in the middle of my palette here so that I don't add too much water to the mix of paint. To start with, I'm going over all of the petals using plain white gouache. One or two of them had a tiny bit of the uh, black to mix a nice grey colour, but um, all in all, all you want to do is just paint over all of the petals with the white gouache. Now one of the things I really enjoy about working with gouache as a watercolour artist is that you don't have to negative paint. You can add your white paint as a colour without having to paint around it. I also love it because you don't have to wait for each layer to dry before applying the next, certainly in the way that I'm applying it here. So I take this colour all over the um, all over the petals, but you can see that I've added a tiny bit of blue here to one of them, but white will work just as well on all of these petals. I've speeded up the next section because everything's the same and it would be a rather slow, boring video if you watched me paint all of the petals individually. You can see there that I had a slight accident with my paint, so all I'm doing is using my magic eraser and just patting that off like that. Super easy to resolve that problem. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow here. Just to let you know, by the way, um, all the materials I'm going to be using today, rather than me reading them out one by one, I'm going to list everything in the description box underneath this video. So, But use any paints that you have, and you could also paint this on maybe a white paper, a white watercolour paper, because that's usually a creamy colour and it would still stand out. Mix in red and yellow to create this lovely orangey colour and I'm applying this with a smaller size brush to this stamen in the middle of the flower like this. Notice how I'm using a pattern motion to apply the gouache to the paper. This means that I have full control over the application and it just makes it easier to navigate the smaller little areas on the plant. Adding a little bit more white to that mix just to add a bit of texture using a dab in motion as you can see me doing here. Now earlier on in this video I mentioned that we have a reference photograph and outline that you can trace down if you want to and um, super easy to get hold of those. All you need to do is watch this video right until the end and I'll put them up and you can screenshot them and uh, print them out that way. You can also join our Facebook group where you can have access to all of our tutorial references and I will also link that in the description. I've mixed a lovely light green colour here by adding yellow and blue with a tiny bit of white. Notice how bright and vibrant this colour is at this stage and I'm taking this all the way down the stem. You just need to add a tiny bit of water to loosen up that paint. Be careful not to add too much because you don't want it to be translucent like watercolour. You want to keep the thickness as thick as you can adding a tiny bit of white to brighten up that colour. A bit more blue to darken it up. And I'm going to apply this colour on the, on the other side of the stem and at the top of the flower. Blending your colours with gouache is really, really easy. The key is to keep your brush as dry as you can, but having enough water on there to blend your colours together. 
If the paint is sticking to the paper, just add a tiny bit of water to your mix, pat your paintbrush dry on your paper, and you're good to go. Notice how I'm just taking off the excess water there and using a really light touch to blend those colours together. If you are new here, we do launch new tutorials every single Tuesday, usually with watercolour, and if that's your thing, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Mix in a grey colour here with a bit of black and white, and you can see how I'm applying it with my smaller brush. If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you please to give it a thumbs up? It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying what I'm doing, and it means more people can see it, and it's also a way that you can support my channel. Notice how I'm applying the grey colour to add a little bit of detail to each of the petals now. Again, cleaning my brush in that rather untidy, rather muddy looking puddle in the middle of my palette there, but just blending it in using that light touch. Once you feel that paint sticking, return to your little puddle of water, clean your brush dry and pat it on your kitchen paper before you go back to your painting. That makes the blending process really easy as I'm doing here, but make sure that you use a really light touch. Now, if you enjoy painting flowers and you enjoy botanicals, we do have a Patreon where every month we release brand new content that you won't find here on YouTube. They are exclusive to my patrons. We work only in watercolour and in case this is something that interests you, let's just take a look. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are at a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls. Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. You can see me here adding a tiny bit of that green colour to the bottom, using that pattern motion to blend it out. Just taking up some grey tone to the middle of the petal to add some shape and form. Adding a bit of grey to the underside of this petal here. Just mix in black and white to get this colour and you can vary how dark or how light you want to add that grey by of course either increasing or decreasing the amount of white or black that you add. Once I've applied the paint, as always I clean my brush, pat it and then using that method to blend in the paint like this. adding a little bit of texture, adding some detail to the outside edge of this petal, and you can see already that it has a nice 3D effect. I'm varying the tones of grey as I work through, adding more black or more white as necessary. It's entirely up to you how much detail you put. Adding a little bit of blue to that black tone, because I felt that some of the petals had a bluey tinge to them, so I'm adding a little bit of blue to that grey tone, just to give it a bit of variation. It's also a good time to sharpen up your edges if you find they're looking a little bit untidy. Using the same blending process throughout. If you are struggling with watercolour, maybe you'd like to try working in gouache and see how you get on with that. It's something that I've been um, experimenting with over the last year or so, and I absolutely love working with it. It's so different to watercolour, even though they are, of course, both water-based mediums, but they handle very differently. I know that you can water down gouache um, to make it perform in the way that watercolour does, but I like to use it as thick as I can to get that almost oil painting or acrylic look on my paper. It's so different. Uh, compared to watercolour and I really really love it but you can get that blending once you get the hang of that blending process 
it really is quite magical, the effects that you can achieve. I've tried to keep this painting as simple as possible um, so that everybody can join in even if you're new. I'm adding a little bit of lemon, a little bit of that yellowy tone mixed in with yellow, uh, mixed in with white to create a kind of creamy colour for this bottom one and uh, just applying it all over the white colour that I've already applied. I just wanted it to look a little bit different to the other petals, although it's a really subtle change. Going back to that grey tone and just adding some detail. Notice that you don't have to wait for that paint to dry, just going over that wet paint. Just using a wiggling motion with my brush. This is just a small um, size zero brush. Any watercolour brush will work just as well. will work fine for uh, applying gouache. And I've done the same to all the other petals. I uh, mixed up a brown colour here by adding the green mix that I already had with a tiny bit of that red tone. Um, with a little bit of blue and probably a little bit of black as well. We want a nice subtle brownish tone. I've also added a tiny bit of white to this to make it a little, uh, little lighter and you can see that I'm going on to this area here between the petals and the underside of that plant. Using that pattern motion once again, adding some white to the mix. and blending it in with my brush using the pattern motion with that tiny bit of water. Working carefully around those petals. Adding a bit more white to the mix. and blending it around. We want all the uh, negative space to be filled in at this point, so we're covering up all that existing black paint, all the existing black paper, as you can see me doing here. And I do apologize for my hair in shot there, should have tied it back. Just carrying on the process, working around each petal. Going back to that brown mix and using the tip of that brush just to sharpen up that outside edge. And using the brush to blend the colours together. Using the existing brown mix, I'm just adding a little bit of detail here on the centre of the, of the daisy, just a sort of end shape to create the illusion of uh, a little bit of texture and then I'm just using a pattern motion to blend those in. Going back to that green tone with a little bit of black added to darken it up and just adding this on the left hand side as you can see me doing here, working around and blending in with that damp brush method that I've explained throughout this tutorial. Just by patting that brush you can see how easily it is to blend those colours together. You can see how I'm adding that darker green to the areas as I'm doing here and another line down the middle of the stem. So it really looks as though the light is hitting the right hand side of the daisy stem as you can see here and once again blending it through. Picking up some more of that brown, I've added a tiny bit of black to darken it up and I'm just adding some detail. Using the tip of my brush to create some sort of a bit of texture on the underside and some veining as well to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
by using this really light touch you can obtain really really fine strokes there to create these beautiful veins to make it look like the underside of the daisy. So we're almost finished with this painting. If you have enjoyed it, could I ask you to give it a thumbs up and remember to stay right until the end so that you can have access to the outline and the reference photograph. And I'll put a playlist at the end after the outro so that you can have a look at some more tutorials that we've done in gouache if that appeals to you. Thank you so much for watching. Here's the finished painting. Let me know what you think.